Hello everybody. I'm just going to be giving you guys a quick introduction to writing using your own variables, strings, and creating your own macros. A simple hello. And there we go. So we've got hello. All right. So now let's try and uh, try and get started with working with numbers. So when getting started working with numbers, we're going to go dot and r. Then we need to put in a register, so we're going to call our register var, and then give it a value of three. All right. And so in this case, what I'm saying is name register var, and then we're giving it a three. So nothing's being printed out here. All right. So to actually print our value of our register, we're going to go backslash n, put this in square brackets, and we're going to put var. All right. And then. There we go, we've got a three right there. Now, this probably seems pretty neat, but I'm sure you probably wanna be able to do more. So something else you can do is you can actually increment by adding a plus here. And then, and then there we go. So we've got a three and a six. So that's basically what we're saying here, set this to three, and then we're saying uh, print it, then we're saying increment this by three and print it. So now that you guys know how to work with uh, numbers, let's work with strings. Strings are basically a string, like a collection of letters and spaces and all that sort of stuff um, that can be used in graph to basically be stored. So for example, we're gonna do dot ds. Uh, we're gonna call this str for string. And basically what we're saying here is define string as d. Uh, as str, so that's the name of our string, and then we're going to give it a value. In this case, let's call it hello world. And so the way that this is actually working is we're doing, so we're defining our string, but you'll see that there's actually two values here. And these aren't actually going to be split up. Basically, everything after the def definition of our name for our string is counted as part of the string. So I'll show that in a sec. So let's do backslash, and instead of an n like we had for a register, it's a star, All right? And I think of star as string, if that helps, and n for number. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do str, just like before. And now when this runs, you'll see that our string is printed, all right? So let's give you an example of how you guys can use this. So for example, doing dot .ip in the ms macros will create an indented paragraph. And then write like the first argument to our indented paragraph is what will be used as a our marker, so in most cases people would use like a bullet or a dash, but in this case we want numbers. So we want a number, but we want to have it increment. We don't want to try and remember which number we're on. So let's go dot nr, so name register, and then we're going to give the register the name var, like before, and we're going to start it off at one. All right, and going back here, we're going to go backslash, backslash, and just like before, all right, and then hello. Bam, there we go, we got one hello. And we can actually get this to work doing nr var plus one. And then here you'll see, look at that, we've got numbered bullets and we don't have to try and remember what we're on. Something worth mentioning is that I'm sure you guys have noticed this double backslash. And so the reason that I used a double backslash here, like technically we could just use slash because in this case it should work fine if I just used a slash. Yeah, so it'll come out the same if I just used a slash. But the thing is, is that when you use double slash, you're saying, um, you're basically telling Groff to fully evaluate this. Otherwise, when it reads IP right here, like when it reads this line, whatever value is in uh, register var when this is read will be used. So that might seem a bit confusing, but it'll make a bit more sense in a second. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna create um, a macro. So all a macro is is basically uh, IP right here is actually a macro. This indented paragraph is actually basically calling a bunch of graph base requests, telling it how to format this specific part of the text, and that's what we're gonna learn how to do today. So we're gonna do create one really easily. We're gonna do dot de uh, for define, and then we're gonna give our macro a name. And our name for our macro, we'll just call it max. Max. All right. And then for the end of our macro, we do dot dot. 
Okay. So we're going to just put hello inside of our macro. We're going to run this. Nothing should change. But if I do dot max, then you'll see that hello is printed, right? Pretty cool. I'm sure you guys can see how this would be useful. Like for example, we could do dot IP. Um, oh, uh, and then we have a nice simple way to print hello with a bullet repeatedly if we wanted to. But I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. So we can do dot nr. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to go tell it to basically start our indented paragraph. We're going to do dot nr plus one, All right? And then So we've re so now we're just going with var here, and var. So I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. Oh, oh I've forgot about the end. There we go. And so the thing that you guys are going to notice here is that there we go. This works. We printed out one. But when we run it again, you'll see that it just prints out one again. And so the reason for this is, like I said before, this section, this IP right here, is basically, this is evaluated. So our, our register right here is evaluated when this macro is read for the first time. So for example, let's run this, and you'll see, oh, what the heck? It's just printing out a one. And like I said before, it's because when Groff reads this, it's basically reading um, all of this together and it, right when it gets to it. And so even though we change the variable down here, it's not being reevaluated. And so the way that you do this is you're basically going to um, put a backslash again. All right. And then when we run this, you will see that it actually works. And we're basically saying, don't define this. I, I'm basically saying, I really mean this, if that makes sense. Um, so that can be something that you got to watch out for. Uh, it get that's a really big gotcha, and it can really mix people up. All right, I think that's probably enough for you guys to get started. Let's uh, let's try making something else. So something that we're gonna go through really quick. So this is an auto incrementer, and something that you guys could do, for example, is maybe do, say you wanted to do like dot ce for like center, and then hello, this is figure, and then slash. Um, all right, so basically, when you guys look at this, oh, <laughs> I mentioned the backslash thing and then I immediately forget. Um, and then when you guys look at this, you'll see that we can put basically one centered line. And so say like I have like a, I don't know, some from. So say if you guys don't worry too much about this EQ and this sort of thing right here, I'm just using this as an example of figures. Um, all right, so we've got some figures right here and you guys wanna just give it a little figure title. This is basically what you guys are getting right here. So something worth pointing out is that 
you'll see that the t numbers don't change. And the reason that the numbers don't change is that, like I said before, this is all evaluated when graph reads this, which is pretty much whenever, because graph reads this line by line. So it goes here, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here. Oh, it sees IP. What's this value? It evaluates it and keeps going. All right. So then by the time these guys are ran, nothing has changed. So if I go down here and we even change this register, you'll see that the actual output is the exact same. So what you guys need to do instead is you basically do, you put an extra backslash in front to basically say, don't evaluate this. You're saying, I want, I really mean this. Basically saying, get rid of, like when this is, when we call our macro, this is actually going to be read as this, All right? That'll make sense if you guys play around with it for a bit, but you'll see the advantage. And now the output actually increments. So really quickly, I'm just gonna go over one more example to try and make this a bit clearer for you guys. So we're gonna use dot cd and dot de, which basically centers some text. So we're gonna go, hello, we're gonna do like this is figure one, or sorry, we don't want figure one, we want dot backslash backslash and var and Okay, and then we're gonna make some figures here. Um, actually, let's just all, so don't worry too much about this, but I'm just gonna make some quick figures. Uh, some from one um, So these are just some quick figures I came up with. And oh, I figured out what the issue was, so I just needed to add a, um, just as part of the MS macros, that was my own mistake. But now you guys will see that we can automatically number our figures. Um, obviously this doesn't have referencing. I will hopefully get to go over that in a future video, but this is a nice um, simple way to just do auto incrementing of your figures if you just want to number them and reference them by hand. Um, and yeah, I think that's a good enough starting point for macros. We will definitely be covering more later. There's a lot you can do. You can do loops. Uh, you can do if statements. It's Turing complete, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, yeah, I'll go into that in the future. Anyways, for now, thanks for watching. If you learned something, like. If you have something that you feel like if you feel like you want more coverage on this or stuff like this let me know if you want to hear more uh, comment down below letting me know what you're interested in if there's something I different didn't cover if there's something you want me to cover all that sort of stuff um, thanks for watching and goodbye